Hey everybody, welcome back to Sophisti Cakes by Mary. For this cake, we're gonna do a single tone cake. This is different than I normally do. It's a citrus inspired abstract ruffled fondant type of cake with some fantasy flowers. And I'm also gonna ask a favor of y'all. Um, I know this is summer and this is when everybody's busy and I'm starting to notice my numbers drop a little bit when it comes to views and I understand everybody's busy, but if you like what you see, please take a moment to subscribe, like, um, and, and if you want to share my videos with somebody that you know, that you think would like them also, feel free to share this with them and I would be forever grateful. Now let's get to the video. This cake was a four layer, six inch cake that I had already filled and chilled. And you can see that it was a hot day when I filled it. And this is a lesson here. You know, I like to show share when I've done something that I you could learn from. Um, it shifted a little bit, tilted a little to the side when I transferred it to my refrigerator to chill. Now it is a subtle lean. So instead of trying to fix it, I just decided I was gonna try to correct it with buttercream. So what I do is I put less buttercream in the spots that are sticking out and more in the spots that are, are the sides that are dented in. Like if the bottom is angled out to the left and the top would be angled the other way, then I fill in on the top. Does that make sense? Just to kind of level it all out there. And I think it worked pretty well. You, I don't think you would know if I hadn't told you that I had corrected that. If you didn't see the steps of me correcting it, you, you probably would not know. And then go ahead and pull that lip into the middle. And I used uh, my Crusting American buttercream that I will put a link to in the description box. And now we're gonna put that in your refrigerator to chill or your freezer, whichever one you prefer. Um, it depends on if you are needing to use it right away. You could do 10 minutes in the freezer or 20 minutes in the refrigerator, and then you're ready to attach your fondant. But I had to make these flowers ahead of time. So I actually made these the day before. And what I'm using is a styrofoam ball. I think this is an inch diameter. And then I have some gum paste that I, um, I have enough that it is a ball of the same size, if not a little larger. And you're gonna flatten that disc out in your palm, add a little bit of water, don't do too much because if you add too much, it's just gonna slide around on that styrofoam ball. Just a little bit of water and then just pull it around, manipulate it around that styrofoam ball, pop any air bubbles, it might be trapped in there and just, you do this for a long time until you get um, a smooth sphere. Then I went ahead and I did three of these and I poked a hole in it so that I have a space for my wire and I added a little bit of glue to my floral wire, a little bit of hot glue and stick it in there. Now this is one of those situations where you're gonna tell your customer that there are inedible objects inside these flowers. So they're pretty, they're most, you know, somewhat edible, but would not recommend. <laughs> and then I'm just using some stamens while those are setting aside and firming up a little bit, the centers. And I did one whole section when you buy these stamens they come up in bundled up sections and i used one whole bundle for each flower and that did not even go all the way around the center but that was okay the way they're going to be um placed on the cake you wouldn't it wouldn't be obvious you could use two of them if you wanted to to cover the entire center i just i did not have the time to go get more so i just made it work and let's see, what did I miss here while I was babbling? Um, yeah, I cut one of the little stamens off of those, those wired stamens. So to use those to stick into the ball. And there you can see I had wrapped some floral, floral tape around the wire to bulk it up a little bit. It's a little skimpy, a little spindly if you don't do that. And I just thought it would look better. Since it's gonna have a heavier um, blossom, we're gonna call it a blossom because it's abstract, you can call it what you want but it would be heavier on one end, so I thought the stem needed to be a little bit bulkier. Not the end of seeing much of it, but I wasn't sure how I was gonna place them. And then I am just using some edible glue, which is just a little bit of gum paste and water that I had left to sit for about mm, an hour, half hour to an hour, so it dissolves a little bit. Stick one end in that, and then stick it into your sphere. I would recommend using a sharp tool or a toothpick or even a skewer to kind of, a skewer might be too wide, but something narrow that you could stick into that fondant 
or that gum paste before you put the stamens in there just so you're because those stems or the the wire end of the stamens is pretty fragile and they like to bend easy now just go ahead and set those aside to dry like I said I did mine overnight and then I'm just using regular fondant I think I used fondant this time or Wilton fondant this time because I wanted to use a fondant that's going to have some some rigidity to it homemade marshmallow fondant works but it seems to be it's a little softer so I find that the pre-made fondant brands work better for this type of a technique um, even sat nice but honestly any of the the cheaper fondants work better for this type of a design I'm sorry they just do <laughs> and then I just rolled it out and cut it to different sizes and shapes I have a bunch of these that I made ahead of time before I attached them to the cake and I just used my small rolling pin to thin out those edges just a little bit you don't have to do that part I'm just so used to doing it that I just just did it um, if you want more less of a ruffled appearance on on the edges of these um, we'll call them petals um, then I wouldn't do this part but I did want to have these pieces rolled out and um, set aside for probably oh well, half an hour would be good before you attach them to the cake just so they dry out just a little bit so that um, the, the ruffled parts don't kind of get softened. You want them to hold their shape. And then I just rolled out a little piece and added it to the top. I think I just sprayed it with water. You could brush with water if you want. You can use, um, you can even use an edible glue or you can use some shortening or you can use some simple syrup. Any of those techniques will work to get the fondant to stick to the top. And honestly, if you have brought it out from the refrigerator and it's humid or the freezer, then um, the humidity that will form on the outside of the buttercream will get it to stick just fine. But I just went ahead and made sure that all of it was covered. And I'm doing the same thing for the side here. Just a little bit of water. For these bigger pieces, I'm sorry, it's not in frame, but what I wanted you to see what I was doing there. For the bigger pieces, I wanted to, it's a little easier to roll it up to attach it to the cake rather than um, try to pick it up and place it because I want to make sure that these ruffles were laying in a place that was pretty instead of just wrapping it around the cake and then cutting up the excess. This is a slightly different style. So I wanted to roll it up so that I have, felt like I had a little more control over the fondant. And then I'm just kind of splaying those pieces out of splaying. Is that a good word for it? <laughs> Moving those top edges out a little bit so that it has a more of a ruffled effect. And then I did another big piece on the bottom just to kind of cover up all that fondant. And then I used the smaller pieces to add extra depth and dimension to these ruffles. And just cut off that excess with a sharp knife or a pizza cutter, that works too. And then just re do remember to add more water as you're attaching pieces, because there is no water on the outside of that fondant. It's just on the buttercream underneath of it. And make sure you're removing those air bubbles when you see them, and just make sure that it's stuck to that buttercream pretty well. And I do try to kind of smooth down those edges that are underneath other pieces of fondant a little bit, so that you don't see a lot of ridges, but that's kind of hard to avoid so much. And you don't have to put these end pieces on the bottom. I just thought it kind of made the, the um, design continue on down. A little more cohesive. And just play around with it until you get it where you want it. Now the last touch, we're just adding our flowers. I had, I don't sure know if I had done it before this or after it, but I, I took that um, footage out where I did brush a little um, shortening on the fondant because I wanted to remove the extra cornstarch, or not cornstarch, but um, yeah, cornstarch that I use when I'm rolling out. Not cornstarch. Yes, it's cornstarch. I don't know why I keep forgetting what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so there we go, guys. My finished citrus inspired summer citrus inspired ruffled fondant cake with some fantasy flowers i hope you liked it and if you did please like i said go ahead share it to the world 
So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.